praise god uh, welcome all of you to our sunday morning service let's begin the service with a word of prayer dear lord jesus we just thank you father god for giving us an opportunity to come to your house today father god thank you lord for bring each person who is very special in your eyes into this house lord jesus we just pray lord for each person today lord that you'll speak to them very perfectly today lord very specially today lord and lord as today is the healing and deliverance service lord we commit the entire service lord may people be healed today lord may your children receive healing today lord may their hearts and their minds and emotions be healed today father god we thank you father god we know that the holy spirit is going to do something special father god in our midst lord we thank you that the holy spirit will do something beautiful in our midst today lord we commit the worship team into your hands lord anoint them very powerfully today bless them abundantly father god anoint them lord as we worship you lord even during the worship let signs and wonders begin to happen father god we commit the entire service into your loving hands lord let the word speak very clearly lord as they listen to the word lord let people be healed lord as we listen to your word lord let people be healed today lord let people be delivered today lord let the worship glorify your name lord we commit the entire service into your loving hands father god in jesus name we pray as we man as we get into a time of worship i just want to remind each of you that every time we worship and praise god something beautiful happens and there are so many testimonies of people being healed people being delivered even during the worship time so worship time is a very powerful time let's all glorify god together today i invite brother thiru to lead us in worship come yes, sir good morning everyone um, before we could start the this worship uh it's uh, look into the passage in exodus 15 verse 2 it says the lord is my strong defender he is the one who has saved me he is my god and i will praise him when the glory of god is on your life you will have dominion over every form of darkness you will be the light that shines in the midst of darkness around you amen as we worship and praise him i want everyone to just declare the goodness and promise of god these are the days of elijah declaring the word of the lord these are the days of Moses right is speaking to stone and all these are days of retirement of famine and darkness and so Days 
Zagat. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of our praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Yes, Lord, you're so great. You're so awesome. Yes, Lord, your name is so powerful. Oh, hallelujah. Let's sing it again. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Go and see how great, how great is our God. do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you of the glory and the honor. Don't we lift our hands in worship? so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no makes you not to sin. Sometimes situation makes you dark in your heart. Sometimes situation makes you believe that lies. Or what God is not answering my prayer. It's not lie. It's not true. That's lie. We have to come out of that situation and open up our mouths and declare His praises and wherein God dwells and He will answer your prayers. He will heal you and He will, he will do all kinds of deliverance in the middle of that worship. So I, I encourage all of you as we sing one more time, open your mouth and declare His praises and show devil 
that you are not believing him but you are believing the word of god because god is great and he will do his miracles is on his way to you your answer is on his way for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you lord there is no one else there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else there is no one else like you trust in you and we believe in you lord you are our home yes lord hallelujah lord we welcome you in this place hallelujah welcome, welcome holy spirit we are in your presence Fill us with your power Live inside of me Welcome to the Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Thank you. 
Bible it says the spirit of god prays for us prays with drowning with full heartedly or whole heartedly with burden in in the spirit of god's on and he intercedes for you and me sometimes in our life we see no one is around us when problem shows up people run away from us when everything is good people are around us if anybody is here saying and no one is around me and no one cares about me and no one is there for me to pray for me i am going through tough times in my life and there is no one to even listen to what i am and here's the verse the spirit of god is there for you he is reminding you that he is praying for you and your problem is going to vanish to what the spirit of the lord is reminding me to speak about and as we worship one last time the spirit of god is among us and he is going to answer you and you don't have to expect anything from anyone god is on your side hallelujah amen you're the living water never die Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Lord. We are in your presence. I'm praying in your presence, Lord. Fill us with your power Live inside of me Oh, thank you, Lord, for last time Welcome, Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Oh Lord, thank you Jesus for your presence is here in our midst, in this place Lord. Once again we welcome you. We want you to live in this house as the worship is going to, as the service is going to continue. Lord, you speak to us. We thank you for you, you are praying for us. We thank you for you intercede for us Lord. You are the living water. You are the never dying fountain. And you are our comforter and counselor. and you take complete control of our life lord hallelujah you know everything lord before even we could pray for what we want you know it and you are the god who who is answering our prayers who has ears to listen to what we pray and you are not only the hearer of our prayers but then you are and we have our testimonies how many testimonies we have We have never forgotten you Lord what you did in the past you are the same God even today yesterday forevermore you are an unchanging God and you will answer our prayers Lord and we are confident in you hallelujah Lord we run to your presence when we need you and there is no situations in our life that we can say we don't need God but even in good times and even in bad times we need you I pray that you take control of this service as pastor speaks and whatever is planned today Lord I pray that everything will work together for good in Jesus name we pray amen Thank you so much uh, brother Thiru and brother Alvin for leading us in such a blessed time of worship I'm sure God touched us even during the worship So today we're going to today is a special service and everyone who's come here today I believe that none of you have come here by accident. God has something special for each of you today and he never does anything by accident. Nothing is unplanned in God's kingdom. Everything that he does, his timings are perfect. When he brings people to a certain place, that is perfect. Whatever God does, everything is 
perfect and today the first time we are going to have healing and deliverance separately for healing and deliverance so i think god has some healing some deliverance to do for each person who is seated here today do you know why before we start and get into the word many a time we think that healing we have to struggle with god we have to struggle and receive it from god but that's not the way how do we know that's not the way how do we know that it's god's absolute will to heal each of us today how do we know that how do we have confirmation that 100% god wants to heal you wants to keep you in divine health because all through the gospels matthew mark luke john what did jesus do he healed the sick he healed everyone who came to him whatever background even if they had done wrongs even if they had generational curses whatever they had all through the bible jesus healed every sickness every disease and he said everyone who came to him were healed there was not one person who came to jesus who was not healed so it's absolutely god's will and god wants to give you healing god is compassionate he knows your sickness he knows your situation and he wants to heal you and deliver you so today we're going to focus on healing and deliverance secondly we are also at the end of the service we are going to have our holy spirit baptism class where we'll believe for god for if you don't speak in tongues we are going to trust you that god helps you speak in tongues so today the message just four things that i want to show you in the message today one is how do you and i receive healing from god how do you and i receive healing from any sickness from god then why though everyone is believing for healing why are some people healed some people are not healed thirdly what are the hindrances what are the hindrances to receive healing so that today we are definitely after the service at the end of the service we are going to pray for everyone who needs to be healed but when you go back home that's the time that sickness you are reminded of that sickness when you go back home and you are sitting quietly that's the time those symptoms come up those symptoms of your sickness show at home so at home is the greatest time to receive your healing when you are sitting in god's presence when you are praying that's the greatest time finally why do some symptoms still linger even after you have believed god i want to start by reading mark chapter 11 verse 12 now the next day the next day when they had come out of from bethany he was hungry and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs in response jesus said to it let no one eat fr- fruit from you ever again and the disciples heard it so this is a famous story of the fig tree many of us know the story of the fig tree we know that one day jesus was very hungry and he walked towards galilee and there was a fig tree over there but there was no fruits on the fig tree no fruits on this fig tree fig tree it was not the season what did jesus do he immediately saw the fig tree and he said i cur- i curse this fig tree you will not bear any fruits at all but what was jesus actually doing he was teaching his disciples a very important lesson he was teaching them an important life lesson what was he teaching them so firstly he cursed the fig tree but did the fig tree die immediately no the fig tree was still standing everything was still standing the fig tree was just like that but one principle Jesus taught them he said he cursed the fig tree so any time you have a sickness Jesus has given you authority to curse that sickness to rebuke that sickness command that sickness to dry up from the root command that sickness so first thing as a believer sickness is not from god sickness may be because of a wrong lifestyle maybe some sicknesses are because of overeating some sicknesses are because of lack of exercise some sicknesses are because of sin but whatever the sickness jesus wants to heal you 
even if you've not lived a good lifestyle everything jesus wants to heal you which is very clear so jesus was teaching the disciples first when you have a sickness curse that sickness then but after jesus cursed that sickness and he went away the next day they came what did they see the next day so that tree that fig tree even after they cursed it it was still standing it did not dry up that whole day it must have stood but the next day when jesus and all his disciples were walking what happened we'll see verse 20 says now in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and peter remembering said to him rabbi look the fig tree which you cursed has withered away so jesus answered and said to them have faith in god for assuredly i say to you whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he has those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them so that day when they cursed the fig tree when jesus cursed the fig tree it was still there it was still standing but the next morning when jesus and all his disciples are walking the same road that fig tree is just died and even the roots have died completely even the roots have died completely sometimes when you see people cutting a coconut tree or mango tree the cutters who come and cut the coconut mango tree they will say after we go if you have some acid pour it on the root why so that that mango tree doesn't come back even after the tree is cut or the coconut tree they'll pour acid so that the mango tree root again new plant does not come so when jesus cursed the fig tree it dried up from the root so when you curse your sickness it has to dry up whatever it may be it may be cancer it may be high blood pressure it may be cholesterol it may be headaches body aches when you curse the sickness from the root it has to dry up from the root without a trace the root of that sickness you will be healed from the root so jesus taught them a great principle but it didn't happen immediately sometimes when you curse the sickness it may symptoms may still be there you are believing god for bp to be healed but after praying still sometimes that bp is there but at that time what do you do then he said then jesus said the second principle that jesus said is he told them if you speak to the mountain to be removed and cast into the depths of the sea it will be done secondly jesus said the second principle he said you have to open your mouth and speak to that sickness if you have bp curse the bp in jesus name command the bp to be removed and cast into the depths of sea if you have cancer curse the cancer in jesus name come on tell that cancer you be removed from my body and cast into the depths of the sea and even if you don't see it immediately continue to stand in faith don't give up it some sickness instantly you will see healing i remember many years back when we went to a village in madur i prayed for a small girl i prayed for a small girl and she had three surgeries done on her knee i just prayed for that girl and i prayed in jesus name i said in jesus whatever nuts bolts whatever has to be rectified let it be rectified in jesus name in one second she had pain for three four years in one second the pain left but there are people sometimes we've prayed for them but they've had fear and have not seen the sickness they've had fear they've had doubt they've had a sickness for a long time so they had to deal with unbelief i have not seen them heal but it's again unbelief has to be removed so firstly when you have a sickness curse that sickness command that sickness to go in jesus name and it will go then verse 24 it says therefore i said to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them jesus says if you have a sickness if you have a disease or you have any problem when you are asking me itself believe that i have the power to remove that 
I have the power, I have the authority, I have the might and not only that, I want to remove that. I want to heal you. I want to bless you. Whoever came to Jesus with a sickness, he didn't say, you did that sin, that's why you have the sickness. Your fathers did that sin, you had. No, no, no. Jesus said, I forgive you, I forgive whoever did that. I want to heal you. And Jesus healed everybody. So when you ask Jesus for something in prayer, what do you do? You believe Jesus, while I am asking you, while I am cursing the sickness, while I am speaking to the sickness, while I am praying at that time, Jesus has healed me. Jesus has completely healed me. Jesus has completely So When you are praying, just believe that at that time, you are healed. And that's what Jesus says. When you pray, believe that you are healed at that time. So three principles Jesus taught the disciples. First, curse the sickness. Command that sickness to dry up from the root in Jesus name. Cancer, BP, whatever it may be. Curse that from the root. Let it dry up in Jesus. Secondly, speak to that sickness. Tell that sickness, be removed from my body and be and leave my body now in Jesus name. Thirdly, as you are telling the Lord Jesus, Lord, I am believing you to remove this sickness, to remove this disease. At that time, just believe that you are already healed. Don't have any doubt. Don't look. After you have prayed, don't check. Okay, I have this lump in my body. It's still like that. No, no, no. The minute you prayed, it's removed. That's all. Don't doubt at all. That's the principles Jesus taught his disciples. And that's the principle Jesus is teaching us today. Two hindrances. I just want to speak now. What can be a hindrance? What can block your healing? So that tomorrow, if you are having a sickness or a disease, what do you do in that situation? Two hindrances. And then we will read a verse and we will close. So sometimes, one can be personal unbelief. Sometimes you may think, okay, I am praying, I am praying. But this symptom, this lump is still there in my body. Sometimes you had a disease for a long time. So you are not able to believe God. God, will you heal me even at this stage? Can you heal even this disease? I have had it for so long. So personal unbelief, personal doubt. Will this happen? Will this not happen? Will I be healed? Will I not heal? I am not sure. I am praying. Still I am seeing the symptom. So personal unbelief can be a hindrance to receiving your healing. So if... You are not seeing the healing. If you are believing God to heal you, maybe sometimes kidney problems. You are believing God to heal you from kidney issues. But you are still seeing certain symptoms in your kidneys. What do you do at that time? At that time, you ask Jesus to help you overcome every unbelief. Ask Jesus. Deal with the unbelief in your heart. Deal with the doubt in your heart. Continue to pray. Continue to fast at times. Deal with the unbelief in your heart. And then suddenly you will see that healing happen in your body. That symptoms will be removed. Everything will be removed. So sometimes the hindrance to healing can be personal unbelief. Will God heal me? Does God desire to heal? Today we know it's God's absolute 100% desire that you are healthy and whole without a doubt. All through the Bible is our reference. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels. Jesus healed every sickness. Jesus healed every disease. There was no disease that he said, no, this I am not going to heal you. But he said your faith made you whole. So your personal unbelief, you have doubt, ask Jesus to remove the doubt. Secondly, we all know Daniel, the pro Daniel, who was a great man of God and Daniel was called the beloved of God. I encourage you to read Daniel chapter 9 and 10, both very beautiful chapters. I won't read it today, but you can go home and read Daniel chapter 9 and 10. Very beautiful chapter. So the first chapter, Daniel, he prays and he is asking God, God, forgive me for my sins. Forgive my city. Forgive Israel for the sins that they have committed. Forgive my city. Forgive me for the wrongs that I have committed. About 3-4 minutes into his prayer, the angel of God comes. Angel Gabriel comes and says, Daniel, you are beloved of God. God has answered your prayer. And what happened? The angel brought a prophecy to Daniel about the 70 weeks. About the 70 weeks, an end time prophecy. The angel brought to Daniel and gave him a prophecy saying that, Daniel, your prayers are answered. Israel is going to be delivered. Your sins are forgiven. Their sins are forgiven. And I am going to bless Israel. But 
at an appointed time at the end I am going to come and rescue Israel. So when Daniel prayed, in 3-4 minutes the angel came, brought the answer, whatever he was praying for it came. But Daniel chapter 10, again Daniel prays, second time Daniel prays, what does Daniel pray? He begins to pray and intercede and whatever Daniel prayed for this time, it did not happen immediately. Daniel prayed but before Daniel got the answer to his prayer, 21 days it took for Daniel to receive the answer. Why did it take 21 days? The minute Daniel prayed, first time in chapter 9, Daniel prayed 3 minutes down, no hindrance. But then Satan must have seen, okay, Daniel, when he is praying, God is giving him an answer for him and the nation. So sometimes, the second time, he prays 21 days, Daniel's prayer is just withheld. Why? Then after 21 days, angel Gabriel comes to Daniel. And he tells Daniel, the minute you prayed, your prayer was answered by God. But the prince of Persia, he literally stopped your prayer from coming to pass. The prince of Persia stopped Daniel's prayer from coming to pass. And Daniel called Archangel Michael. Michael, come help me out. And after that, the answer came to Daniel. But 21 days it took. So sometimes, my friends, Satan doesn't want a person to be healed because... If they have a sickness, they cannot serve God fully. They cannot worship God fully. Always at the back of their mind, Ayo, the sickness is the Ayo. I can't do this. I may not be able to do this. How will I do those things? So that's why Satan sometimes hinders a person from receiving their healing. Because if you are healthy and whole, you can do God's work. You can be a blessing to your family. You can be a blessing to many people without any worry. So Satan can hinder people. But those are people of authority and power. So if Satan is hindering you, if he's bringing doubt, he's telling, no, you won't be healed. No, you're not going to be healed. The sickness, see, you have asked God, but the symptoms are still there. So at that time, it can be a hindrance from Satan. So two hindrances that you have to deal with when you have a sickness. First, personal unbelief. Ask God to help you deal with that. Get it out of your heart. Get it out of your mind. Second, it can be Satan or demonic hindrances stopping your healing. In that case, Daniel could not resist the devil directly. But you and me, we can tell devil, take your hands off me. Take your hands off those evil thoughts. Take your hands off me in Jesus' name. The New Testament believer, he has power and authority over the devil. Daniel didn't have that authority. Angels had to come and help Daniel. But you and I, God has given us that authority to curse sickness. God has given us that authority to command sicknesses to go. And it will go in Jesus' name. God has given us that authority to speak to Satan and tell him, Satan, whatever hindrance is there to me receiving healing, be gone in Jesus' name. So we have a lot of power and authority. Finally, these two verses and then we will pray. I want to share two testimonies before I get into these verses. So I was reading and studying about healing and I listened to the testimony of one man of God. This man of God, uh, he is a, a big man of God and he had suddenly one day, he had a cancerous lump on his right hand. A big cancerous lump came on his right hand. And he is a man of God, he is praying, he is believing God. But for two years, He's telling the God, he's telling cancer lump, I curse you in Jesus' name, go from my body in Jesus' name. But for two years, this cancer lump he's praying every day. But this cancer lump is just on his body, it's not going at all. So one day he was very frustrated, very tired. God, I am believing you, I'm standing in faith. Two years or two and a half years, I'm standing, but nothing is happening to this lump. What he did is he began to speak in tongues and it says he told that for two and a half hours to three hours he was going on speaking in tongues and he said that night he just slept in the morning when he got up that cancer lump had disappeared so that's why my friends when we speak in tongues when we take time when we are seeing a sickness again and again get rid of any unbelief command every hindrance to depart or speak in tongues 
and you will know why that sickness is still there. Why is it not going? Why is that problem still there? God will reveal to you and help you deal with that sickness. That's why it's so important to speak in tongues and have a relationship with God. I want to tell you a second testimony today. There was a man called Bob and Bob, he was not a very wealthy man, but he had a, he had a small house and one day he wanted to sell the house and he got a job very far away. So he wanted to sell this house and he wanted to go to a place far away. So he put this house is for sale. Anyone interested, please call this number. Again, Bob was praying, trusting God, God, this house is going to be sold. But for three years, this house didn't get sold. So Bob was wondering, God, I am praying to you. I am asking you, Jesus, help me sell this house. Why is this house not being sold, Jesus? I am praying so much. Then Bob, he said, one day he spoke in tongues. He began to speak in tongues for a long time. Then Jesus showed him, Bob, when you prayed three years back, that time your house was meant to be sold. But the person who has to buy your house, his money is stuck. His money is held. So Jesus showed that the person who has to buy Bob's house, his money is stuck. So Bob prayed, God, let that person who is going to buy my house, let that money be released. And in 24 hours, the next day, there was a man holding two big suitcases in front of Bob's house saying, Bob, I want to buy a house. Three years back, on I think October 25th, I saw the sale. Three years back, my wife and I decided that we are going to buy this house. But they had to sell a property. And he says, I don't know what happened, Bob. Miraculously, yesterday night, my property got sold and that person gave me the money. So do you see, when you speak in tongues and ask God, God, what should I do in this situation? Why am I not getting a job? Why am I not receiving this breakthrough? Why am I not receiving this healing? When you take time and ask God, God will show you, this is the exact reason. Or this is the exact reason why you have not received your healing. Or this is the exact reason why you have not seen that breakthrough. So, remember my friends, and we are going to pray right now for healing for everyone. But before that, so always remember this. John 6.63 says, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Very important verses. I want to read this, then we'll pray. John 6 says, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Last verse today, Proverbs 4 verse 20 to 22 says, <clears throat> My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It says, when you keep God's word in front of your eyes and you guard it, you keep studying the word and you guard it with all your heart, what is it going to happen to you? It's going to be life for you. You're going to have strength. You're going to have a confidence that God will heal. God will provide. God will change my situation. And then it says, and health to all their flesh. Health to all their flesh. I remember when I was, the first time I got a job. I'll just share this and then we'll close. The first time I got a job, this was in Chennai. I was working in IIT Chennai. I was handling the HR operations for them completely. Uh, slowly, I grew in that company. Then they gave me in charge, after three years, they made me handle the HR operations for three, four centers of that company. At that time, so much pressure was there in my mind because I used to handle labor. And labor is very, very tough. They'll come to you with their problems. They'll threaten you if you don't get your salary. When you come out, people will stand like that. So my blood pressure, what happened? My blood pressure was 180 by 150 at that time. And it did not come down. At that time, my mother told me somewhat. She says, Sam, you can go to the hospital, you can take medication, 
it will all be fine go to the hospital take bp medication it will all be fine i was only about 23 or 24 at that time go to the hospital and take so the doctors also very surprised i am so young my blood pressure was so high but she said why don't you trust god and receive your healing so that day i made a decision i am going to trust god i kept confessing but little tension my bp will go i'll go to the hospital my bp will be very high but i didn't take any medication so for almost one year i kept believing god that by the stripes of jesus i held on to this verse isaiah 53 verse 4 by the stripes of jesus by the wounds of jesus i am perfect by jesus took my sickness and because of that my bp is 120 by 80 my bp is 120 by 80 i kept on believing god that my blood pressure will come normal i said in jesus name i kept speaking this verse i kept on looking at Isaiah 53 verse 4. That's what this chapter says. That when you are trusting God for something, let this word be in your heart. Because then what will happen? It says, keep your eyes, keep looking at this verse, keep looking at the verse that you want to receive and guard your heart. Don't let that verse go out of your heart. Then you will be strong and you will receive your healing. One year it took my friends. After that, till today, anytime I go to the hospital, my BP will be 120 by 80 anytime i go to the hospital so god miraculously healed me of fluctuating bp high blood pressure why not that i am someone great no i just simply took god's word i said god you are not a man to lie you are not like people who promise and lie your word says i believe and i receive so that's the same thing for you and me my friends anytime you have a sickness curse that sickness command that sickness to go speak to that sickness tell that sickness to get out of your body if there's any personal doubt ask god to help you deal with that doubt if there's a hindrance from satan rebuke satan bind satan and then finally stand on a verse of god take that verse keep looking at that verse as you keep studying that verse and believing that verse that sickness will be healed healing will manifest in your body. So, shall we close with a word of praise? Shall we all stand up today? So, if any of you have any sickness today, if any of you have any problem at all, maybe financial, maybe family, or any problem or any sickness, I can't do anything for you, but Jesus can. He can do everything for you. And I am just going to pray, but it's Jesus who is going to touch you. So turn your eyes upon Jesus today. Nothing is impossible for Jesus. Whatever it is, Jesus will touch you and heal you. I am just going to pray with you and I want you to receive by faith and receive your healing today. Dear Lord Jesus, I just thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for this message, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for every person who is standing here, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. It is your desire to heal people, Father God. I thank you, Father God. Whatever your desire is, Lord, let it be fulfilled. Father God, you want to remove every sickness, illness and disease, Father God. Every problem, Lord, you want it to be cast down, Father God. Father God, I just believe you today, Lord, that whatever the sickness, Lord, Whatever sickness may be, Lord, any sickness, Father God, I just command every sickness to leave your children right now in Jesus' name. Whatever sickness, Lord, sickness in the body, Lord, sickness in the mind, Father God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let sicknesses, Lord, every form of sickness, we take our authority. We command you to leave now. In Jesus' name, Father God, we bind every sickness, Father God. Let today be a day and end date for every sickness, Father God. I bind every sickness in the name of Jesus, Father God. I command every sickness to be uprooted, Father God. Uprooted and removed, Father God, and cast into the depths of the sea. In Jesus' name, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father God. I release health, Lord. I release healing, Lord. I release deliverance, Father God, on each person standing here, Lord. I release health and healing and wholeness, Father God. Deliverance, Father God. 
Peace, Father God. Peace, Father God. Lord, I am reminded of fear, Lord. Let every fear of the future, Lord, every fear of sickness, Lord, any fears that are there, Lord, Father God, I pray, Lord, whatever the sickness is, keep your hand on that sickness right now. I, God will heal you, Lord. I just pray, Lord, whatever the sickness, Lord, let it be healed, Lord. Let years, Father God, let years, Father God, years, let it be open, Father God. Let every hearing challenge be removed now, Father God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, years be free, be able to hear freely. In Jesus' name, Father God, in Jesus' name. Father God, let's just take a little while more. Thank you, Father God. Speak to us, Father God. Speak to us, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Is there somebody who's here today? God is protecting you from a lot of challenges. It's only because of the blood of Jesus that you are protected. Thank you. Yes, family, family. God is protecting you as a family. God is protecting you as a family. Your daughter is very, very special. Your daughter is very, very special. Today, God is going to deliver you from some evil. I don't know what it is, but today you are going to be delivered in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For some of you, God wants to fill you with His presence, fill you a double anointing, a double portion anointing. Just receive His presence. God has already anointed you. Let His presence increase in your life. Let His presence abound in your life. Let His anointing just multiply, Father God. Let the anointing multiply, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father God. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know why, Lord, but you are showing me that you are protecting people from harm and evil, Lord. Thank you for your hand of protection, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus, I see that there is going to be victory for some of you. There is going to be victory. Whatever you are believing God for, I believe that God is going to give you that victory, receive that victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for doing so many good things in our midst, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I believe every person here is healed fully, Father God. Whatever the sickness, it's completely healed and removed now, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, for sugar, Lord. I pray for BP and sugar, Father God. Father God, I just pray for sugar and BP for whoever has sugar and BP, Lord. I just pray that you will heal them, Lord. Sugar levels will come down, Father God. Sugar levels will be normal, Father God. They will come down and be normal, Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. I have, I feel, Lord, that in the area of sugar, you are going to give normalcy, Lord. If there is BP, Lord, let BP be made normal, Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for answering all our prayers today, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We just bless, Lord. Yes, Lord, even for children, Lord. Those who are trusting you for children, Father God. Let a miracle happen, Lord. Let a miracle happen, Lord. Those who are believing you for children, Lord. Let a miracle happen, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. And we give you all the glory, Father God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just pray for the tithe and the offering. Lord, thank you, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful service today, Lord. We thank you for the wonderful service, Lord. We thank you. We know and we have that assurance that you have healed us, you have touched us, you have delivered us today. Healing has begun today, Lord. Deliverance has begun today, Father God. We pray for the tithe and the offering. Every hand that is given, Lord, or is giving today, every hand that is given over the month, Lord, bless those hands, Lord. May their finances be blessed, Father God. We rebuke the devourer, Lord. You will rebuke the devourer, Lord. May they have no unnecessary expenses, in Jesus' name, Father God, we give you all the glory, Father God. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen.
Thank you everyone for joining us today. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. God bless you.